Welcome, everyone, to the September 17th edition of the Signals from Mars live stream brought to you by the Mars Attacks podcast and VMRIT.com, my web design business for all of your web design needs. Joining me today, this is the Revenge of Yarg. This is the, you know, kind of like when we have sequels in movies. We introduce new characters along the way. So uh, we have, uh, you know, the son of Yarg with uh, uh, Steve Hoker. Uh, what, what, I usually call you the, uh, the OG when we do the, um, <laughs> when I recap the, the patrons. But do you have any nicknames that we could uh, use? I don't have anything good. I don't have anything cool like Dr. Poison or, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to come up with something for you, Steve. All right. Well, you did call him the New Jersey legend before. Well, yeah, there is that, but uh, I think we can come up with a better one. It's got to happen naturally, though. Hey, Rob. Hey, uh, Jeremy. And hey, Ho Ho that's Jose, right? Yep. Yep. Hey, Jose. Woo. Yeah, we're so well, you last week. Hey, everybody. Congrats on the uh, 10K run there. You are a better man than most of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hello, Rob. Um, and hello, uh, Jeremy. Hello to my brother, Art. And um, yeah, you can say Art. No, Arturo. Okay. Yeah. No, either way, either way is fine. Okay, cool. Some people call him Artie. Some people, you know, what, what's the, uh, what's that? It's the Steve Miller song where he says, some people call me this, some people call me that, you know. I yeah, forget. I'm not a Steve Miller fan. Joker. Should we call him, Joker. Should we call him the Space Cowboy? There you go. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. There you go. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it is always fun to have Dr. Poison on. Steve asked me, um, he said, do you have any guests? I'm assuming because you didn't see that I announced anyone or not, I was going to keep... Uh, I was I was gonna keep uh, Brad a secret until the last second, and then when Steve said, "If you don't have anyone, I'll jump on. I'm free tonight." I'm like, "No, you can jump in as well." So uh, it is always fun to have you on as well. So it's a classic um, three way dance. There you go, three way dance. The only thing there's uh, <laughs> th th there are no DQs, and uh, there's a timeout. There's a time limit of about uh, you know ninety minutes. So. <laughs> um, anyway, so there are a few topics that I wanted to, uh, bring up today. I know that Brad has some stories. Um, we talked about Judas Priest last week and, um, yeah, there you go. Twisted Steve. How about that? Ooh, twist. Yeah. Twisted. Uh, That's not yeah, bad. I like Twisted Steve. I was thinking the Hokanator. <laughs> That'll work too. Okay. Yeah, no, you're, it, it you're hooking up. <laughs> yeah, he's getting hooked up. Uh, there you go. You know, my friend used, my friend did call me Hokonomics. There you go. <laughs> kind of like Hokonomics. Whatever. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, so last week we did our discussion on Judas Priest. And of course, the idea is to have another band discussion probably in November at some point. But I think I may have um, uh, posted the bands to select maybe too close to the date. So some people weren't as into the bands as maybe um, as maybe others. So I've compiled a list. We've compiled a list from the attending studio audience. And from this list, we will now uh, I will mention these bands. And let's see what you guys and what the people in the chat say. And from there, we will uh, we will then post in Patreon to have people do the final vote. But so here are the 10 bands that... Um, ooh, and I just thought that one of them... <laughs> I just thought I forgot that one of them uh, was on Brad's list of bands that he didn't get, so... Maybe, uh, well, oh, that still might be worth discussing, though. Yeah, Static X, yes, with the uh, reunited lineup. There you go. Um, Static X. you like Static X? Yeah, yeah, 
What do you think uh, of the stuff? Not so with much. The... Good. I haven't seen it, but it's uh, eh, for me. I'm not. I mean, technically, it's all or th- still three members of the band, but it's right. not like the member of the band. Right. Yeah. Wayne Static was the guy that was. Yeah. You know, and his. I mean, essentially, what they've done is re-record old demos of his and that. Some people already knew just with uh, Zero, who is rumored to be the guy from from Dope. Uh, what the heck is right. his name? Is it Edsel Dope? Someone no, Edsel. that's worst, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Edsel so something. No, it's, the last name is Dope, but I think Edsel Dope, I think, was the guitarist. I think that may be the guy that was actually in both bands, but that ended up in jail because he was... Uh, what was it? Uh... Yeah, I forget. You know, it would be it yes, would I just know what you're talking about. It would just be easy to do one of the most exciting things to do during a live show, and that is type something up on Google and find out um, what the name of the dude no, is. That was uh, Trip Edson, I think. Yeah, so Edsel Dope ours. is is the singer. Yeah, and that's the guy that that's the other guy who is saying that he wrote most of those Static X songs, but whatever. Anyway. Um, so here we go. So the, the band that, um, that Brad said that he wasn't into, uh, is Motorhead, uh, because there seem to be a lot of people that are into Motorhead, but again, this is going to, we're all, we're going to vote on all this stuff later. So I have Motorhead, Guns and Roses, who I'm going to mention again in a, in a second. All right. Okay. Dio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ozzy Osbourne as a solo artist. Okay. Okay. Kiss. Van Halen. Ooh. Def Leppard. Metallica. Scorpions. And Black Sabbath. Wow. So many All good right. choices. Um, Jeremy wants Dio. Yeah, Jeremy's saying Dio. Okay. I think the last time I sided with Jeremy, we both got shot down. So, what did you guys pick? We both, we both went for Heaven and Hell. I think that was on Mark's. Oh, okay. Something. Yeah, we were the only ones that picked <laughs> Heaven and Hell. Rush. Johan yeah. with with Rush. You know, that's not a surprise. I would. You know, that's similar to Steve all of a sudden now saying Twisted Sister. Um, but um, the best thing about this is, I think I've seen every single one of those bands except for. Um, yeah, which one haven't I seen? I think I've seen them all. Maybe, and, I, and I'm sure you've you've got some story about seeing them in a hole in the wall in L.A. Some at uh, some, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I have a feeling. You know, Rob Rob's answer th- that's a rock solid one. Which yeah, which brings me to a question for the group. Kiss is supposed to be here next week. Should I go see him at your house? Yeah, at my house. Yeah, I t- unfortunately I tried nice. to get him to be here for the live stream, but um, <laughs> Paul Paul wouldn't do it. He was out. He was out bike riding some yes, hundred bike, kilometers. Bike riding. I can't do a Paul Stanley. Wait, wait. kind of get the lesbian thing going, but um, yeah, that's about it. That's about all I can do. Um, but if you want Paul. There you go. Yeah, I can I can actually see I, that. I have heard a rumor that if you say Gene Simmons five times into a mirror, he shows up and takes 20 bucks from you. <laughs> but I, I don't know if it's true or not. I haven't tried it. I think I think that was back in 74. I think now it's more like $20,000. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, that, that's true. That, 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 that was <laughs> pretty reunion. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks is, is, is just the, uh, the, f- the fee per minute to hook up the mirror, um, <laughs> to, to, to your point, Brad, uh, I've listed kiss every time and no one has selected kiss. So wow. maybe people in the group are just tired of talking about kiss, or maybe it's one of these things that, that they kind of feel, well, kiss will get talked about eventually. So let's mm-hmm. pick something else. 
Yeah, so, I kind of feel like Kiss is just way too obvious. I mean, it's like we we do talk about Kiss a lot. Right. Um, I think Scorpions is a very good choice. I think Ozzy Solo is a great choice. Um, oh, yeah. But if we do Black Sabbath, we got to get CEO Dave in here. Because, uh, yeah, that would just, it, it'd be like not being invited to your wedding night. I don't know. I've I've had people object. There, there was uh, Jerry made a big to do out of, um, for example, uh, Joey Haney wanting to be involved on one of Mark's um, uh, Patreon yeah. things, and and Jerry said, "Tell him to go pound sand. He's not one of us." Type of a deal. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. Um, oh geez. But. Uh, Steve, um, out of those See, bands, the difference is CEO Dave is actually listening right now. It's just he doesn't know how to do the the message board thing, but he's he's go. listening right. He's been here every week. Seriously. He's that is awesome to hear. So uh, salutations to uh, CEO Dave. Thank you, Hi, Steve. <laughs> go ahead. And uh, what what of those bands stick out? I would say Ozzy and Metallica for me. Okay. They're they're the ones that I'm most familiar with that I'm pretty comfortable with most of the catalog. Out of those that I named, are there any that you're really not familiar with? Dio is probably my least known. Like I really know like the hits and I'm going to give you a song Rob here Pina. or there, but What? What? <laughs> <laughs> um sorry. Well, from here to November, you would have time to uh, bone up on the subject. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Literally. Um, and it's yet another band that uh, I have absolutely no problem with. I just never got into them for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, I mean, that makes complete sense. I mean, how much music is out there? I mean, th this, is, this is one of the reasons that I love what Jeremy does now when he presents me with the uh, patron's pick because he he listens to a lot of different things that I wish I had time to listen to. Mm -hmm. And then he, he'll say, well, this was good, this was good, that was good, but this is my pick. So I've gone on to listen to a, a lot of things based on what, what he's selected just because I'm, I'm kind of getting the Jeremy stamp of approval with, uh, mm -hmm. with a bunch of these different albums. So. Um, can I just say what a great job Jeremy does on uh, those picks? He's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, he's unbelievable. I mean, well, you've heard him when he did the band of the week stuff for us. Yeah, uh, he he was just. I was like, dude, I'm I'm hiring you right now. Yeah, he's he is unbelievable. Um, there was. I'm not. I'm not saying that any of them, um, weren't good. I'm just saying that about four or five episodes ago it's it seemed like he lost like maybe any type of like nerves that he had and he just like hit his stride and everything from there has been absolutely awesome like i'm listening to it seriously i listened i listened to what he sends me right before i included in the episode and i can't tell you how many times i sit there and start to go holy shit this is great just hearing him like all the different just how he describes the stuff. It makes you want to listen to it, you know? So Jeremy, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I can't say that mm -hmm. enough. So and just talking about that makes me uh, ready, feeling like I'm ready to do the next band of the week. So uh, anybody who wants to participate, it's going to be Alice Cooper. And oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody's got to be able to come up with an Alice Cooper song they like, right? Even Steve. Yep. Look, oh, I love Alice Cooper. Okay. So I can maybe even get you to record pick a song and, and record an intro for yard metal for our band of the week say yes okay I, I all right that that's not my, yes uh, but it'll work my golden tones look, look, golden tones that's that. what i want he, he hey, we're we're up and running then okay sorry victor good move, no move forward steve you realize he just gave you the uh the old revival intro there he gave you the say yeah <laughs> so uh, there you go um, so besides this, um, there is, 
There are two albums that celebrate their 30th anniversary today, which is amazing. Metallica's Black Album, the 30th anniversary was just a few weeks back. And today's the 30th anniversary of Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Um, I mentioned this a little bit during the uh, Patreon exclusive podcast today. Um, how a lot of people have talked about how, oh, you know, they should have condensed these to one album, you know, it would have been much better. But if you kind of, I mean, I went through my list of songs that I have in my Guns N' Roses playlist and I get like a good solid album. I get two good solid albums out of both of those. I mean, there's a few songs that I don't care for on each, but for the most part, I think both albums are pretty good. They're not Appetite for Destruction. Mm -hmm. But the analogy that I used and that I also use all the time is that I think people are dopes when they say that, oh, it doesn't compare to Appetite, so it's not that good. Well, it doesn't have to. You know, again, you can enjoy burgers and you can enjoy pizza. You know, it isn't, oh, pizza sucks because hamburgers are my favorite food, man. No, nobody says that. So why do we exactly. do that with music? It makes zero sense. So um, yeah. use your illusion. Um, let's start off with Steve. What What are your thoughts on, on these two albums? Do you enjoy them? Did they make the right decision by putting out two different albums on the same date, or should they have just done one? I mean, I guess that's debatable, but they're both two solid albums. You know, and I, I like you, I've heard the discussion that uh, – you know, oh, they should have combined them. But mm -hmm. uh, I think there's enough. Like you said, there's one or two songs here or there that you could get rid of. But um, I, I think even doing that per album, you'd still have solid albums. Right. You know, yeah. Um, I think you're still yeah, getting I, like eight to ten solid songs out of each. At least. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, I like them. <laughs> They're okay. And and Brad, uh, being that uh, you have the LA connection here, were you still in LA when Guns N' Roses was rising? No, no. I, at that point, I uh, was solid, solidly here in Utah. Okay. And the first first time I saw them, they were warming up for Iron Maiden. Oh wow, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We walked right in when they were playing uh, Mr. Brownstone, and I got to say that that that's my favorite uh, guns and roses song so there you go oh wow yeah, what were they not what, what were they like on that tour were they as you know did did you get a feeling right off the bat that they were gonna be like the next big thing or did they feel electric like a lot of people said they were back in the club days was there you know that inkling of danger with them as well you know so all those intangibles that made them exciting initially yeah, I I didn't quite get that, and I did know the songs because uh, I used to listen. You guys remember the station Z Rock that uh, was broadcast? Mm -hmm. It was out of Texas, broadcast all over the U.S. Yeah, um, we didn't get it in North Jersey though. You had to go uh, to South yeah. Jersey to hear it. Yeah, but go um, ahead. Yeah. yeah, but they played the hell out of that uh, Appetite for Destruction. So I mean, I pretty much heard the whole album on that station. So I knew all the songs. <laughs> Um, I thought they were good, but I didn't. I didn't sense that they were going to be what they became. Right. Um, so I think they were still kind of getting there. I mean, it's kind of like when I saw the, you know, the live at the Ritz that they put on MTV. Right. You know, it, again, it was it was pretty much like that. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like holy crap good. It was it was just, right. it was good. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. My my first in you know the first time that I heard them was again, thanks to Eddie Trunk. And it was funny because uh, I'll always remember this. He played Night Train and hearing that cowbell intro. Yep. And I was like, holy shit, what's this? You know, it just blew me away instantly. And I found out that someone that was in middle school with me at that time, because it was 86, 87 when that came out. Um, Somebody had it. And I said, um, I said, Oh, will you let me tape this? And I'm like, why did you buy this? Like, nobody knows who they are. I just heard them on the radio for the first time. And he said, Oh, you know, 
uh, the cover looked cool. So, so I bought it like, Oh, all right. So I taped it and I instantly loved it. And I remember, you know, I would come, I would come to Spain for the summer and there was someone that I knew that would always come up to me and say, Oh, well, what's the new big band that nobody knows about here that, um, that you know about back home in the States. And I remember the year before it was poison. So I said, poison is the band that's going to be huge. Uh, the first album would come out and whatnot. And he was like, nah, you know, that'll never, that'll never take off. You know, ah, look at the image. Look at the next year I show up. He's got a poison back patch on his, uh, on his jean jacket. He's wearing a poison t-shirt. He's got, you know, he tried to dye his hair. Unfortunately, you know, since he had black, like curly hair, it, it looks stupid on him. Um, but so then the next year, you know, right, when he had all the poison garb on, I'm like, forget about poison. It's all about Guns N' Roses. He's like, and I listened to the album with him. He's like, ah, this is never, ever going to take off. This, he gave me the same shit next year. It was it was a complete 180. He had the uh, Guns N' Roses back patch. He had the, uh, uh, the Guns N' Roses T-shirt. So it, it was like, all right, well. Regardless what I, you know, what I tell you, you're going to say no. So just do what you want. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that was pre sweet child of mine taking off. I mean, that next year when, when I got to Spain, I remember that song like in the U S was played all over the place. So, I mean, they were, they were super huge because of that by that point. So yeah, at least you his know, black curly hair was back in style then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just needed a, the top hat. I love yeah. curly hair. Hey, um, so you know, one thing I'd say for Guns N' Roses is that I mean, they kept getting bigger even through the '90s. I mean, they kept hard rock alive yeah. in that time period, and and so they deserve a lot of credit for that and doing it without actually putting out a lot of new music, right? And and the thing too. That, that's a good point because so many people focus on, uh, you know, um, the 90s sucked for music because this killed, you know, the Sunset Strip music or that did this, this did that. Guns N' Roses got huge. Metallica got huge. Bands like Faith No More got huge. You know, there were still, there were still hard rock and metal bands getting big. The problem was that, you know, a lot of these, people with the Al Bundy mentality that were still back in high school and thinking about scoring five touchdowns in, in a, in a high school game and never got past that didn't bother like to check out any other music. You know, it's just stupid. I, I hate when I, when I talk to people, Oh no, good music came out after 89. Uh, that's very like narrow minded because there's always good music coming out. You got to search it out sometimes. But there's still good stuff coming out today. Even is it again? Is it going to compare to what turned you on to music when you were a teenager? No, but it doesn't have to either. It's just dumb. The new D. Snyder came out. Do you compare it to Stay Hungry? No. Does that mean that you can't just, still like that as much as Stay Hungry, or does it mean that that music can't slot in with your Twisted Sister, D. Snyder, you know, playlist? Not at all. Not at all. So basically if music's good, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any, even if it's something that you don't like, if, if I like it, you know, that's who it really matters. You know? Right. If you like it, that's the important thing. And there's always music coming out. Right. You know, whether it might not be, it might not be appetite for destruction, but there's plenty of good stuff out there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. And it's funny because with the Patreon, there's a lot of things that I post that I'm not into, but I know that there might be someone in the group that's that's into it. So why not? You know, what's what's the worst that can happen? Everyone say, no, this sucks. I don't want to hear it. Or the opposite. Maybe people will say, hey, I really dig this. Please play more or let's add it to the playlist. So, I mean, I think that it's a, it's a no-lose situation. So. Um, Brad, you mentioned one thing 
uh, off well before we started actually yesterday maybe you mentioned that you wanted to talk about what you felt was the uh, greatest american band yeah uh, yeah and the history rock band rock band okay yeah the greatest yeah this is something i heard on the it was on the um, mlb channel yesterday they were talking about this you know cuz uh, there weren't a lot of baseball games yesterday and uh it was kind of interesting to hear people who aren't like music people like us talking about who they think are the, the greatest American rock bands. So uh, I thought that'd be kind of interesting to hear what the people in the chat thought and to hear what you guys think. Cause I thought hard about this and then the obvious answer did come to me. It's like, <laughs> I, why did why did I, how did I miss that? Cause I was, cause it well, was, cause I was listening to those dumbasses talking about who they thought was great. So <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. You, you, anybody out there got an answer? What you would, who you would consider in the history of rock, the greatest American rock band? I mean, Steve, go ahead if you you want to take a stab at it first. Not, not your favorite, okay? That's the that's the other thing. No, it can't not be your, my favorite. I mean, it right. could be your favorite, but it's not your favorite band. It's who you would be like. Yeah, I can't argue. Those guys have what they've accomplished is really the greatest. I mean, as a rock band in America. From America. Um, all right. Okay, Jer Jeremy's got a good answer. Sister. That's a solid answer. I would kind of Johan's leaning towards got a Kiss, good just, as, just as far as like image and being like a massive band that pretty yeah. much is a household name for pretty much anyone. On point. Who would be that be? Test. No, he said it already. He said kiss. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Where was I? Yeah. I was reading the chat. Room. Yeah, well, kiss. I'm... That was that was my definitive answer. It's like, well, holy crap. I mean, let's face it. I and Victor, you probably I know you've interviewed lots of people, lots of musicians. And when you ask them what got into music, okay, anybody who's older than me, they're gonna tell you the Beatles. Mm -hmm. okay? Anybody who's my age younger, they're gonna tell you kiss. I mean, you know, you got to probably go maybe even less, you know, younger than you guys to find another band that got them into rock music or got them to want to play rock music. Yeah, I think that there's three definitive bands without a doubt. And you would have to pick between those three. The three would right. be Metallica, Van right. Halen and Kiss. Okay. Because I don't think that there have been other bands that... Um, that have had a bigger impact in the seventies. Just think about the impact that kiss had on, like you're saying so many people, so many musicians that became musicians after that, as much as people will mention Aerosmith. I, I, I don't know of too many people that had, um, what's the uh, Tom, Tom Hamilton or Joey Kramer on their walls? You know, I don't know too many people that had, you know, uh, Brad Whitford on their wall. If anything, maybe Steven Tyler and, and Joe Perry, but, um, uh, and, and the, the other thing, <laughs> the other thing too, my, 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 my brother name dropping one of my old bands. So, um, the 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 other the other thing to take into consideration is that for all of Kiss's faults, maybe and things that they tried out with over the years, um, Aerosmith after they got back together again, I mean, to me, has just never been the same. I mean, after 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 a rock and a hard place. Like I like songs here and there, but anything from the late eighties onwards is uh to 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 quote uh Michael Michael Myers in uh I forgot the movie where he was um Halloween. No, 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 not that Mike Myers, the, the uh comedian. <laughs> I forget the, the movie yeah, that man. he did. Um oh so I married an axe murder. He kept saying, if it's not Scottish, it's crap. So to me, Aerosmith, <laughs> permanent vacation onward for the most part is just crap. So there you go. 
Yeah, Jeremy, I'm I'm not I'm not debating whether permanent vacation and pump were not big sellers, but to me, they're nowhere near as good as say Aerosmith Rocks or Get Your Wings or Toys in the Attic. And and even even with that, um I'll take I'll take Unmasked by Kiss or even uh, animalize or asylum over both of those albums any day of the week. That's just my personal opinion. Now, with regards to Van Halen and and just their importance in the whole bit, um, you can say that David Lee Roth ripped off Jim Dandy, uh, which a lot of people have said, but David Lee Roth is the one that made it popular. Uh, Eddie changed the way that uh, that people played. Um, if you, if you, or if if I were allowed to include a comment that Charlie Benante once made to me, he said that Eddie Van Halen basically came along and pissed on what Eric Clapton did and reinvented the guitar. So that was more or less his quote, and he asked me to remove that so as to not get into any trouble. But um, Eddie, to me, as a guitarist, later as an innovator with amps, with guitars, with pickups, with pedals, things of that nature, um, he's unparalleled, in my opinion, when it comes to any other player. I mean, outside of Les Paul, there's been no other player that's done what he has done for the instrument. Metallica is the biggest American band of all time. Um, they've sold more albums than any other American rock band ever. They've influenced more people just due to sheer sales. I mean, from the eighties onwards, Kiss is uh, big as they are. Aerosmith outsold them. Um, Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction has sold more copies than the entire Kiss catalog. So keep that in mind. That's just how huge Guns N' Roses are. And I would say Guns N' Roses, I mean, if you want to talk about influential American bands, as you said, uh, Brad, just what they did in the 90s was just so immense. I mean, they had some of the biggest tours around the world and huge album sales to, to, to this day. Their greatest hits sells more than the majority of, you know, most bands that put out albums at that point in time. So... Yeah, I, as a as a rock fan, we needed those bands. We needed them and Metallica to keep the the torch lit. Yeah, and uh, and they Absolutely. did. And not so, only that, they made it bigger. So I I didn't uh, <laughs> I didn't give you a definitive answer. Um, if if we're going with you guys, both said Kiss. Kiss is again Kiss and Maiden are my two favorite bands. But I would have to say just out of sheer magnitude and what they can still do today i would have to say the metallica is the the greatest american rock band of all time i i think that i think you have a solid argument there you know it's interesting because mm -hmm. johan stated about van halen were never that big here and i and i remember when i was in portugal and it was uh somewhere in the early 90s and i saw that bon jovi were playing there and right. van halen was warming up for them Yes. I was like, how, how, how did, how, I, what kind of alternate universe was I in? I mean, there's no way that would happen in the United States. Right. But the problem is that maybe in New what, Jersey. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's that your only United exception. <laughs> that's, that's your only exception. But the thing is, in Europe, Bon Jovi was really a huge act up until, like, up until Richie Sambora left. Even the shitty albums they were putting out were still selling huge in Europe. So I, I remember a friend that came in 93 for exchange for, for college over here, or to Britain, actually. And she said that she couldn't believe how big Bon Jovi was, that they, were, they had sold out, I don't know how many nights at Wembley Stadium and how everyone that she knew was going to the show and... And things like that. So they've always been huge, you know, similar to how we talk about other bands that never made it big in the States that just remained big over here. Like, like status quo 
which Jeremy has uh, talked about, and I hope Jeremy will continue to talk to me after my Aerosmith comments. But um, <laughs> <laughs> like status quo, like Magnum, like bands that are super huge. Thin Lizzy was enormous in Europe, but really didn't didn't become big in the States until almost after Phil Lynott died, you know? So, um, yeah, so Jeremy's saying that Van Halen supported Bon Jovi here too at Wembley and were poor. So, I mean, that was the the Van Hagar years. That's uh, that, that we could chalk up to a similar conversation that we had the last time, Brad, where a band that I – Loved everything before. Like I used to love those Sammy albums, but it's one of those things where over the years, I just stopped being interested in them. Just something about their songwriting. Uh, just, just the compositions themselves just don't speak to me anymore. You know, I, I don't. Yeah. I saw them uh, on the monsters of rock tour. Okay. And when they were of course headlining that thing, and they were not good. And most of it was Eddie. Eddie didn't even want to be there. Right. I mean, they kind of, it's, I mean, they obviously, I, I mean, they even got in a fight on stage. Sammy was like, come on, Eddie, you know, cause Eddie was like, uh, let's just play a few songs and get out of here. Sammy's like, no, no, we got all these people here. Let's play. And, and, uh, it was pretty weird. I mean, I, I haven't seen that many bands get into a fight on stage before. Oh, wow. That was a, you know, that was about the closest thing I've I've seen to it, um, but I I'm going to chalk that up to uh, drug abuse being an issue or alcohol. Um, yeah, they but they were they were not that great. I mean, the Scorpions were on before them. Scorpions were totally on point, and uh, which is why we should probably talk about Scorpions because I've never seen them do a bad show. Well, I was going to say at that point in time, you could argue that Scorpions was a bigger band than Van Halen was. If you honestly want to think about that period in time, um, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and Scorpions were the three biggest bands in the world for a long period of time in the 80s. I mean, there were no other bands that could touch them within hard rock or metal. Metallica rose eventually, but... You know, uh, those those three bands were, were up, uh, you know, were up there towards the top. And I didn't understand, similar to what Johan is saying, a lot of people knew who Van Halen were in Europe, but they weren't a huge band. You know, the, the big music fans knew who they were, but but the casual rock fan didn't didn't really know them. So uh, I, I always thought that that was a head scratcher that uh, that Van Halen headlined above them and i mean you could argue that i mean dokken was huge around that time as well um metallica was was a big seller as well i don't get why metallica was the second second band there but you know again theoretically maybe van halen should have gone on second <laughs> yeah um yeah that's a good that's a good point yeah, it's interesting too. Dokken was really good at the show I saw. The one I went to was in Spokane, uh, Washington, or as Klaus said, Spokane. Um, and <laughs> the guy, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, Dokken was Dokken and Scorpions were the two best bands. Although Metallica w was really good. I, that was the first time I saw them that I was like, okay, I see big things for these guys. Where I had <laughs> seen them before, warm up for somebody. Yeah, what is this? Yeah, yeah I, I did see the Scorpions live um, while waiting for a connecting flight at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. Um, it was funny. We were waiting for our flight. And I'm sitting there with my wife, and I'm looking up, and I see these guys, like, just dressed like, like how, uh, you know, a rock band would dress, I guess. And 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 I say to my wife, who's who's this fool who thinks that he's fucking Rudolph Shanker here? And then I see Matthias behind him and 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 Klaus behind him. I'm like, holy shit! It's because it is Rudolph Shanker, uh, you know. 
And it was funny. I, I tell my wife, I'm like, that's the scorpion. She goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure that's the scorpions. So she flashes the horns and, um, and James Kotak, who was the, uh, the drummer at the time turns around. Yeah. And, and just goes rock and roll forever, man. And they got onto the, uh, onto their flight. Like there was the last call for their flight. So they were waiting for that to get on the flight essentially. I'm but, surprised uh, he didn't pull his shirt off and show her the tattoo that said that. He didn't have it then. Oh, oh, maybe that's hey, maybe that's why he got it. Could be. Yeah, maybe maybe go. my wife influenced him. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't want to disappoint people without having Brad tell any sort of story while he's on the show. So um Brad, right. what, what, uh, <laughs> look okay. At... So this is, um, this story I'm going to tell you guys, this is the most requested story that I've ever told. And it's from my early days at the poison center. So early nineties, kind of like what we're talking about with some of these bands. Uh, so I hadn't been working there for, for very long and I was working a graveyard shift, which starts at back then it started like 10 PM goes till 7 AM in the morning. And my first call was this guy, it was a doctor calling from an emergency room. And he says, Hey, I got this guy here who came in complaining of stomach problems. Um, and he says, so we worked him up for everything we could think of. Couldn't find anything wrong with him. So I thought, well, I'm going to do an x-ray of his stomach. So, so I did that. And this guy's got a double a battery in his stomach. So now now, th at this point in my career, now, this wouldn't have been a big deal. But back then, it was like, holy crap, I didn't know you could swallow a AA battery. And I had never seen anybody swallow a AA battery. I'd seen a lot of disc batteries getting swallowed, you know, those little, you know, little disc batteries. Mm -hmm. And that's right. a pretty common thing. That's almost a daily occurrence here in Utah. Um, but so uh, the doc wanted to send him home. He says, well, that'll just, that, he'll just poop it out, right? I said, well, let me think about that. You know, I did the, the, you know, battery, the pyloric sphincter in your stomach. I said, yeah, you know, if it lines up just right and goes through the, you know, the sphincter at the bottom of the stomach, yeah, it should, it should come out. But what if it lays there sideways and it just sits there in his stomach for days and days and days and it, all the acid in the stomach corrodes the battery? The stuff that's in there, which is alkaline, it's not battery acid, it's the opposite. That'll burn a hole, okay? And you right. only want two. You only want two holes in your GI tract, okay? One here, one that's bleached, okay? That's the only <laughs> holes you want. Thir a third hole. You know, if you want to be a human bowling ball, it's not a good idea. <laughs> so I said, no, you can't send this guy home with a battery in his stomach. So then I thought, well, what are we going to do with this guy? And we had this stuff that's called Go Lightly. Now I don't know who named this stuff. It it's used as a bowel prep. So in other words, back in the day before colonoscopies got to be a thing, but they still had to do some kind of, you know, go up your poop chute and see what's going on in there. They would give you this go lightly and you did not go lightly. Okay. Basically everything came out of you. I mean, you're lucky to have teeth after drinking a jug of this stuff. I mean, it flushed you out. I mean, there was nothing left. You'd have this nice squeaky clean colon you could eat off of. So, <laughs> I thought, well, you know, let's just give this guy a big jug of go lightly and let's let's, you know, put a tube in his nose and hang it up and run a couple of liters an hour into this guy and let's flush him out and let's see if we can get that battery out of him. So the doc's like, okay, we'll do it. We admit so they admitted the guy, put a tube, NG tube in him, which tube up the nose into the stomach, and hung this stuff like a big IV and just run it through him. And about three in the morning, I get a phone call from a nurse. And she goes, well, all of a sudden, blink, out comes the battery. She said, I picked it up and went, woohoo. And she says, the guy looks at me and says, well, where's, where's Santa? So I'm like, okay, um, there's obviously something not quite right with this guy. Uh, it's three in the morning. He's already in the hospital. We already got the tube in him. I said, just let that stuff run for a while. Let's just make sure there's not something else hiding out in there. Well, the next thing that came out of this guy was a little metal treasure chest like you'd find in an aquarium. And yeah, after that, there was more stuff and more stuff. 
And I mean, the, in fact, there was one thing that came out of him that I know doggone well he didn't swallow. So there's some other issues going on here. But it was the the ring part of a, a mason jar. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? The lid, the metal oh, lid that right. goes on there. Yeah, so he pooped that out somehow. Um, but the very last thing that came out of this guy, Victor, you got the picture? This is it, okay? <laughs> I'm hoping he can put it up there. You got the picture, Victor? I'm going. Okay, there we go. That's the last thing that came out of that guy right there. Little plastic Santa Claus. And you talk about Santa coming down the chimney. Oh. I mean, yeah. Ho, ho, ho! Um, so there you go. That's that's the Santa story. Uh, Somebody got coal in their stocking. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, this is why I need Steve on the road with me. Thank you, Steve. That was brilliant. But the funny thing is about six, seven years ago, I get a call from another ER. This is a nurse this time. And she says, I got a little kid in here who, who ate the three wise men. Now, I don't know why everything's Christmas themed. but <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I said, the good news is they're wise men. They're not the three dumbasses. They should be able to find their way out. And I, she was laughing her ass off. And I said, you know, I got an idea here. Let's get a flashlight and shine it up this kid's butthole. And maybe they'll think it's the star and they'll go towards it. And again, had her laughing quite well. So it was, yeah. So it was a little, um, you know, uh, you know, little three wise men that they had in their, their uh, little uh, manger scene there. So oh boy. the kid swallowed it and then the kid pooped it out just fine. So not a problem. There you go. So, you so go. to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Camel toe. There yeah, you was go. it that guy's son? Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> you know, the the scary thought would be that guy actually having a son. <laughs> Oof. Um, yeah, true. To to it's to amazing. answer my brother with his previous joke, um, I've I've heard that uh, inter or interchange with Ronnie James Dio. Just uh, keep keep that in mind. <laughs> He brought up a Rhea Perlman comment, and um, <laughs> oh, but anyway. yes, 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 yes. Um, you you also sent me another picture. What's the story yeah, behind this, that? This is in response to Mark's uh, post about um, Emily not being able to wear her belt into a concert last night, right? Okay. So yeah, so we'll we'll look at this picture here. This is a belt that I was wearing here in the uh, when uh, I was sixteen. Yeah, 16 hold on. years old. On me. Yeah, it's having trouble pulling in. But um, yeah, back then in the in the mid seventies, as a sixteen year old, it's not like I could get into. Uh, you know, I never even knew there was such a thing as an S and M shop. But okay, don't go to sleep on that. That's quarter inch chain that I bought at a hardware store, <laughs> and I made a belt out of. Okay, so I wore that to a Blue Oyster Cult concert, which is why I'm wearing this T shirt. And when we were going through the the screening there at the door, and it didn't help that my buddy there playing guitar, that's Ralph Johnson. He's the guy who turned me on to Judas Priest. So that now we're going full circle. But he was with me. And uh, when we're going through the door, he uh, there was a police officer standing there, and, and he, he touched his gun, and he said, is that a real gun? <laughs> and that didn't help either. So then this guy's like, lift up your shirt. I had a flannel shirt on over that. And they looking at my belt and the guy says, we can't let you in here with that. So, well, what am I supposed to do? He says, well, you can't wear that. And th so they ended up, they, they got in a big discussion about it. Then they took us into this little room where they had the police chief in there and the guy's going over and he goes, well, that's a deadly weapon. And uh, my buddy, Ralph, he said the most brilliant thing. He says, well, here's the deal. If he kills somebody with that, you'll know who did it. <laughs> and the cop said, you got a really good point. Yeah, go ahead and wear that. So he let me in wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> and your pants. And I didn't up. hurt anybody. So yeah, it was all good. So I don't know why they why they went nuts over Emily's belt. But uh anyway. So so yeah, anybody, yeah. anybody ever had anything confiscated going into a concert? A camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I was, go ahead. This is when digital cameras were already like on the market. They had been out for a few years. And I tried to um get one in 
into a show and they said, Oh, that's way too big. If it were smaller, you know, we'd let you, uh, we'd let you in with that. Um, I was I was about to give you a, a, a Michael Scott. That's what she said. Uh, comment, but uh, anyway. Uh, so um, so anyway, I had to go back to the car, leave the camera, and then go back to the show. But yeah, that's an SG, right? Yeah, that. Well, I was playing. Of course, I'm playing a bass, so I'll, I'll show right. you the actual bass. Oh wow. So this is not a Gibson. I bought this when I was 15. For, <laughs> yeah. This it's it's a Japanese knockoff, which is kind of funny. I mean, back then uh the cheap stuff was made in Japan. Now if you get a guitar made in Japan, it's expensive. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a, a it's a mock Gibson uh EB3 is what it's a is what it's a copy of. But obviously I still have it. This thing rocks though. Uh, very much, uh, the neck on it is the size. It's a, what, 32 inch or whatever neck or 30 inch. It's, it's almost like a guitar neck. Uh, so it's a very cool bass, but yeah, him and I had the, my Ralph had a, a actual Gibson SG. So that was, uh, the real deal. I've always been partial to those. So cool. great, great they, question. Art. They don't have the same tuning issues that the, uh, that the regular SG that the guitar SG has. You know, and that's a that's a funny point too. Hey, look who's here. This is my son Nathan. Say hey, Nathan. Hey, hi, Nathan. Yeah, he's coming and visiting. So cool. Oh, there you go. You, um, you've you've brainwashed him into being a Dodgers fan as well. <laughs> yes, I did. That's exactly what I did, and also <laughs> like almost liking hard rock. So that's a good thing. Almost. There you um, go. Yeah, we could get him in here. Ask him who his favorite hard rock band is, but he left. Oh no, he's right there. Okay. Um, no, this thing this thing stays in tune really, really well. It's got some cool things though. It's got this weird kind of bridge thing that pulls up a sponge thing to it and deadens the strings. It's a mute. That's oh wow. Kinda, that's kind of weird and cool. I mean, why did they put that on there? But I know Ralph's SG, he actually had trouble. It had the a weird tremolo thing on it originally, and he had impossible to keep it in tune. Yeah. So he had a guy put a, a badass bridge on there, and then it from then it was just perfect. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he still has that guitar as well. So that's why that's that's why the SGs that you know Angus and and the ones that Tony Iommi play cost like six grand <laughs> because they yeah. don't have the the slant in the neck that makes them go out of tune all the time. Yeah, this this thing this thing's been through a lot. I don't know if you can see the back. It's got dents in it from that chain belt that I used to wear. See that proof that the chain belt existed. Yeah, that's true. And also the frets are kind of a little bit messed up. I was playing a gig. It was a block party thing. And we were in the, in the opening of the garage. The garage door was up. And I got this kind of crazy idea near the end of the night. At the end of a song, I took the bass and I, I put the strings against the garage door, you know, which is at this point <laughs> parallel to the ground. And so I started going like this against it. And all this sawdust is falling down on me. It was like the, the end of a Kiss concert back in the 70s, you know, when right. Let Me Go Rock and Roll was going on and all the confetti. It was like that. So I had all this sawdust coming down on my head. I thought, man, that was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, but And the neck has survived that. It survived that kind of stuff. I used to rub it on all kinds of crazy things. Hey, we've already That's told crazy. enough crazy stories today. <laughs> 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 well yeah there was that too <laughs> um steve you've been known to dabble with uh guitars as well um what uh what's your favorite guitar that you own uh it's probably my gibson studio light your gibson studio light okay yeah um what what makes that one special uh, it was the the thrill of the hunt for that one. Okay. I saw it at uh, Ro Robbie's Music Barn in uh, Wayne. Right. I think I may have told this story actually, but um, for for the new listeners, um, it was I was in high school, at some point probably junior or senior year, and I saw it there and just thought it was really cool. It's a translucent blue. Oh wow. Um, and I just thought it was a gorgeous guitar, played amazingly, but it was, 
I want to say it was twelve hundred dollars. Wow. Which uh, you know, back in high school when back you then, yeah. don't really have that kind of money, you're like, well, I can't get this now. So I was saving up for it. And then when I finally did have enough money, it was gone. Oh wow. So then uh then I heard like the line got discontinued. Um <laughs> So then I was just randomly searching on eBay one day and it came up and I was like, huh. okay, it was 800 then. So right. I was like, oh, it's even cheaper. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I was finally able to get it. And uh, that's been my pretty much my main guitar for a good long while. Cool. There's... So um... I put, uh, good. I put in the, the Zach Wild uh, EMGs. Okay. Well, yeah. I didn't do it. I wanted it to be able to play again. So I took it to, <laughs> I think it was Guitar Center. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I have that pickup set in a, um, in a knockoff Chinese uh, Les Paul. Um, when, when the Chinese uh, knockoff started becoming a thing over here, a friend of mine says to me, oh, you, these are great. Uh, you know, somebody told me they play just as good as the real thing. And, and sure enough, you know, we ordered a bunch between the two of us because of course, you know, you could buy like three for the price of one or one that was an authentic. So of course we get the stuff and it's, you know, the paint job is shit. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't know any better. Um, cause there, there were no like warnings at that point in time. There wasn't anything like, Oh, don't get this because it's, you know, uh, because it isn't as good or, or whatever, but I will say that I do have a seven string, which, uh, no, it was not Mike. It was while living here in Spain. Um, <laughs> um, I do have a, a corn seven string, which I think was like a B model that, uh, because the neck, the, the only difference is that the neck isn't completely finished, but the rest of it is, you know, looks like it's the, the real deal. Of course, a lot of these guitars, um, they're not all Chinese. Some are Indonesian and they're, they're B and C grade. So they started selling them on eBay. So, you know, they weren't going to make any money off of them. So they figured that they would just put them up, up there for sale and make something off of them. So, but, you know, um, it's one of those lessons learned, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes it's just fun to play on a, a crappy, like, you know, $150 guitar. Hey, my first uh, guitar, uh, the, which is the mic guitar that my brother brings up, is an old uh, Charvel from 1990, I believe. Um, and that cost me 125 I think. So, I mean, it was what I could afford. Wow. Yeah, so. I, uh, I went to, it was Keyboard World when that was in Ledgewood Mall. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you were still here for that, but uh, my mom had just gotten me an acoustic guitar at the Music Den in Landing, mm -hmm. and uh, we went, happened to go to Ledgewood Mall, and they had a Hondo Les Paul imitation, or knockoff, that uh, looked like Slash's, like, Appetite for Destruction, basically, like, uh, Welcome to the Jungle, like, the, uh, the Sunburst. Mm-hmm. One and I was like, "Oh, this is so cool!" And she was like, "I just got you an acoustic guitar. You're not getting something, another guitar." <laughs> and I was like, oh. and "It was it was 150 dollars." And I was like, "Oh, it's so cool, though." I was like, "Right, I'll never ask for anything else." <laughs> right, I promise. She, that, she, yeah. she was like, "All right, this will, you know, you're you're mowing the lawn for the summer for free." And I was like, <laughs> "All right, that's cool." <laughs> I just like the idea that somebody uh, so, had the genius idea to name their store Keyboard World. Ooh, that'll get and sell guitars. In. Yeah, and sell guitars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many of those stores are still around? Because there was again the Music Den and Landing. Then there was another Robbie's, like up in like Mount Olive. There was uh, Long and McQuaid. Um, are any of those stores still Where around? Was that that was Where's in the in the in the Ledgewood Mall. I don't remember that. Yeah. I'm totally blanking on that. I remember that Keyboard was, World. That was um that was right before I moved over here. So around 2000, that 
that music store was called Long and McQuaid. It was right in front of the Hallmark. Hmm. I'm trying to think if uh, if that's what Keyboard World was before, or it was Keyboard Could World be, before. Because it had a name change. Like, it was something else. Okay. And then Long and McQuaid bought it. Okay. Maybe I just, it, maybe it just didn't click. That, well, <laughs> Ledred Mall is uh, kind of not there anymore. The, uh, the inside part isn't there anymore. Right. Uh, they've been like gutting that. Now it's like got a super Walmart on the end. Right. They just opened. Um, so it's bigger than the one they had? Here they opened it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Um, the music then in Landing, I don't know if that's still there. I haven't gone up there, but there's one in Randolph now. Okay. Uh, coming down. It's a really big, like, three-story building. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, that's the only music store that's, like, right by me. M music, and I remember going in there and trying. It was a... Um... A Jackson, it was like the first time that I had seen a Jackson uh, Strat where it had, um, it was, uh, what the heck was it? It was uh, four tuners on the bottom. No, it was okay. three, two on the top, and then one in the middle. They have they have like, uh, like the Marty Friedman Les Paul that he plays has that same sort of head okay. stuff. Um, yeah. And I remember trying it and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And the salesman was like a kid that was like my age, basically. I mean, this is sometime in the 90s. So, you know, he came back and said, like, so what'd you think? I'm like, oh, it's really cool. You know, I really like it. So you think you're going to get it? I'm like, uh, I'd like to try it a little more. You know, I've only been like messing around here for like two minutes. Okay, I'll give you some more minutes. You know, I'll give you some more time. He came back like two minutes later. So what'd you think? You think you're going to get it? I'm like, mm, nah, I'll pass. Give me back my pick. He was like that. He put out his hand and he made me put the pick in his hand. And I was like, oh, last time I'm coming here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I do like Guitar Center because they, they just kind of give you a guitar and then like they, you know, you can play for like the day if you want. Right. And then they're, they're like, oh, all right. We'll see you tomorrow or something. They don't care. They're not like too pushy there. Yeah. My experience. The the worst part about Guitar Center for me, at least the store in Totowa, which was the one that I would go to, was mm. if you didn't leave with something, it was, so you didn't find what you were looking for? Like, yeah, I got to come back another day. Well, there's nothing here today that you want to get. It's like, dude, I'm going to be back in like two days. They have to order something for me. You know, it was... It was, you know, there was a push. You needed to leave with something, you know. You so need picks or some strings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You need no, picks. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to the dealer for your car. <laughs> yeah, it was the same exact thing. So, um, yeah, stores are completely different over here. I used to go to one store over here consistently. Like I'd even go to visit the guy, you know, the owner and just chat about music and stuff every, um, every now and then. And, um, and unfortunately he closed because even before the pandemic, I mean, he didn't want to start selling stuff online. He was all about, no, people have to come in and feel it, feel the guitar mm -hmm. and they have to become like one with the guitar to pick it up. And I was like, dude, like online business is taking your business away you need to you know f fight or flight basically you need to either mm. do it or, or close and he ended up closing you know because he just couldn't take it there's there's a store that's called uh Tomen over here which is in germany who has a small presence in north america because they have um they they sell knockoff guitars, which are called uh, Harley Benson, I believe that they're called. Um, okay. And I've heard, um, is it Glenn Fricker? I think his name is, who's up in uh, Canada, who's for a Spectrum Spectrum Media something or other, where he's a producer and he talks about gear and and all this other stuff, and he he's talked there equipment up quite a bit and you know he he often talks about how if you're starting out you shouldn't go hog wild and buy a six thousand dollar les paul that like 
a two hundred or three hundred dollar knockoff is probably going to be just as good as a seven hundred or eight hundred dollar Epiphone or, or ESP mm -hmm. or Ibanez because you're not paying for the name basically. So, um, so they're exporting some stuff there, but here in Europe, I mean, they're they're huge uh, because you've got if you spend over twenty bucks, shipping is free. So unless you're buying picks that, or strings, that's really easy to do. Yeah, um, ship, shipping is free, and it's it's shipped. You know, most of the times within three days, you have whatever it is you're looking for, and their stock is ridiculous. Uh, someone that I know owns a, a, a another music store. It's funny; I didn't realize it was him until we were away at a basketball tournament, and he says, uh, "Oh, so you don't remember me when you'd come into my store?" I'm like. What, which is your store? He's like, yeah, it's this store. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm bookstore. Uh, no, right. yeah, it was bookstore. <laughs> Bought my most expensive pedal off of the guy. Um, but uh, he was like, yeah, I remember you. Because obviously, you know, you're from the States. You know, your accent, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, oh, my God. you!" And he, like, it was all of a sudden the story that he told me about where his wife was from, where he was from. Everything clicked. And before that, we had been talking at games and stuff, and we didn't, we didn't, you know, I didn't put two and two together. He he knew what was going on. I was somehow was a brain fart, and I didn't realize it. But um, so yeah, he told me that he went because he's an official distributor for. Uh, he told me the name of the pickup company is Lawler Pickups. They're out of Nashville, and they're handmade pickups. And um, that's pretty funny. He, what's that? It's a Lawler pickups from Nashville. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, that Lawler's from Memphis. Same state, that's different true. city. Um, that's true. But maybe there's a relation, though. Who knows? Um, Could be. Actually, it's spelled different. It's L O L L A R, I believe. But anyway. Oh, okay. So he's he's been to that the town where this German store is from, and he said, you know, there's a street named after them, and he said. There, you know, there's just one factory. The dude that owns it is from the town. He built a factory in the town so he could provide jobs to anyone in the town that wanted one. So awesome. he said, you know, it's it's a massive facility with just a, a ton of local people that just work there. So he's not only has the biggest music store in all of Europe and one of the biggest in the world, but he's you know the number one employer in his in his area. So that's cool. Right. So, um, in any event, we've been all over the place tonight. Gear, Santa Claus. And I, and I think we've settled on uh, the greatest American rock band. It's the Eagles, right? <laughs> I hate the Eagles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mark okay. Mark brought it up. He goes, "Well, you, uh, during one of the shows when he said that he bought tickets for the Eagles, and he said, he said, Are you into the Eagles? Like, nope, not at all. <laughs> so you can uh, you 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 can you can ask uh, my brother. The first time we were ever in France, we entered and um, and, and we were flipping stations." And I'm like, oh, oh wow, Hotel California. <laughs> so we listen to Hotel California. We they start speaking. We're like, ah, oh, you know, let's find another station. See what else they're playing. Hotel California. I shit you not. I think we listened to Hotel California for like three hours straight until we like decided to turn the radio off because there was like nothing else to listen to. And by that point, this was just like excruciating. So um Yes, don't like I the love Eagles. that song, but six hours of it might be a little too much. Yeah, don't like the Eagles. Don't like Fleetwood Mac. What else? Well, we t we talked about that. You talked about she's coming. You had to get out of the way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you got to get out of backstage because <laughs> here comes Stevie yeah. Nicks. Yeah, Mick Fleetwood, awesome dude, man. He was such a such a nice guy. Uh, you know, no airs about him. Just kind of like, hey, how are you guys doing? And, uh, but yeah, then it's like, yep, everybody's got to leave. Here comes Stevie. She won't get out of her car till everybody's gone. 
<laughs> whatever whatever yeah so uh yeah quick uh, california <laughs> hotel california story <laughs> uh, in high school in art class um my buddy ed who is the drummer in my band he's the guy who poured a coke over tommy lee's uh, head uh, mm-hmm. once uh, because he flipped him off it was pretty funny anyway um he would always come to class late and the, and the you know it was the teacher was this kind of real groovy kind of chick and she'd let people bring in their eight track tapes and you know play whatever they wanted to during class while we were doing our little art projects well these chicks would always bring in their eagles tape and put it in and it was hotel california so ed was always late to class cuz that's just the way he was and he comes storming in there about 15 minutes late and hotel california's on he just walks right over to the thing. He pulls the tape out and he just throws it. And then he stuffs in his eight track tape. He actually had an eight track recorder, which I I think he's the only person who owned one, but he would put on a vinyl a black Sabbath or whatever. And this, what this happened to be black Sabbath, but he would run it manually with his finger. Okay. So it would like the timing was so totally messed up and it would start going faster and then slower. And then he'd start running it backwards and and he recorded that and that's what was on this tape he put in and the other students were just like oh my gosh you know this is awful but nobody would say anything because everybody was afraid of ed everybody, everybody was quite sure he would kill them if uh, <laughs> they said anything so <laughs> this is one of the best moments ever in high school so we had the we had his shenanigans. we had eight track recorders in in college actually because they were used yeah. for yeah, they were used. Uh, well, it wasn't called an eight-track recorder; it was called a cart machine. Yeah, um, a radio. Yep. Yeah. So we would we would record the um, you know all, all the shit like this. Ow! Anything like that would be on a cart. Hey, cue up the cart. You know, and it would be the um, the whatever the NPR commercials or whatever else we were forced to play. So it was all on a cart and you'd have to play carts this hour we want to play carts five eight and 16. it's like okay yeah. no problem you know so, what's funny is the software i use to run yarg um metal uh they still refer to that like you can put things you can record uh, things and have them in there as carts oh so wow i thought this i thought that's kind of that's funny cool. that that's stood the yeah. test of time yeah yeah and and to the guy offering, you know, to buy to want to be famous, buy followers, prime and viewers on bigfollows.com. Hey, I tell you what, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Mars Attacks Podcast, and we'll make you famous for as little as two dollars a month. You can join us and talk about Santa if you'd like. There you go. So I think that's costing me a little more than two dollars a month, but <laughs> not as, but not you as get much as it costs that guy. T-shirt if you if you kick in more kids. There you hey, go. You know what? This is uh, this is the best money spent right here is hanging out with you guys. So everybody in the chat room, everybody who's still there, Arturo or Artie or Artemis, um, yeah, Rob's still there. I think you guys you guys are the best. And Jeremy and uh, Jose. Wow, look at that. I was gonna suggest go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. now see now now the jersey say that about Brad. Out. <laughs> well how dare you arturo li- little little does he know i'm i'm i receive messages i receive messages like that um i probably get about 20 to 30 a day from uh, oh you can buy this want want to improve your you know this or that or want to buy Whatever. Yes, Rob. Ten bucks gets you a shirt. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> and it's an awesome shirt. Uh, I I should have sent you that picture of me wearing it. You could have put it up there. That would have scared the hell out of people. There you go. Um, any uh, parting last words uh, before we sign off tonight? Uh, no. Other than this has been a blast. You guys are the best. I I can't wait for next Friday and uh see what victor's got up his sleeve and steve what an honor and a pleasure to share share the time with you and uh thank and you we we really got we got to talk more about this uh, youtube channel we're going to do where steve and i get in an rv and go around the united states and parts of canada that they'll actually let us into and uh 
shoot video of us eating stuff. So there you go. I'm down. <laughs> that's that's the spirit. First stop, St. Louis, and we'll we'll pick people up along the way. Like we'll take Rob out. Rob Rob can probably hip us to there we go. some of the coolest places to, to eat in St. Louis. So that would be even better. We have guests. We have guests each week. I like that. I see there you that. go. That sounds good. There we go. And then the big payoff will be the trip to Spain. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> we, the only problem is Victor we might be drown like, well, driving the, the RV there, but it'll be house. fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what'd you say, Brad? <laughs> I said you'd be like, no, we're not going out for Spanish food. We're going to eat at my house. I'd yeah. be okay with that. I, I, well, I would make, I would maybe make the uh, exception. But um, anyway, I do want to say thank you to everyone that's been in the in the chat. Um, again, Rob, we had um, we had Jeremy, we had Johan. Um, we have uh, uh, Paula there who is saying hello. We had Jose earlier. Um, if I'm missing anyone, thank you guys for spending Friday with us here. It is most appreciated. Uh, there are a million other things you can do. Oh, Steve has already checked out. <laughs> he, he couldn't wait. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get out of here. Um, so I do appreciate anyone who has joined us tonight live. Yeah. Anyone that um, is back, we th I thought I thought that you said, uh, "Screw these guys, I'm going home." <laughs> uh, my phone decided, like, "Oh, I'm gonna shut off." Yeah. No. Um, so, anyway, just thanks to anyone who's watching this live or listens to or watches the replay. You are very much appreciated. Uh, thank you to anyone who's liking or sharing the episodes and looks like we may have a, a for um we'll we'll have to set up a a, a new tier in patreon for those that want to get in on the uh, rv show <laughs> now we're talking there you go yeah. we'll have steven, to do steven brad wreck america there you go <laughs> dr poison and 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 twisted, twisted steve, steve. There Twisted you go. Steve, that's it. I, I'm going, I'm throwing down on that. Twisted Steve. <laughs> awesome. Um, so how's it? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Dio and all that. We've, we've got, we've, we've got two months uh, to prep for all that stuff. So <laughs> in any event, uh, thanks guys for being a part of the show tonight. It's been awesome. And um, yeah, the Archies, the Archies. Um, and thank you guys for. I feel like Ark's gone through like five monsters during this show, man. He's just now getting warmed up, man. He's really on a roll. <laughs> that's why they they. That's why one of his nicknames is Artie the One Man Party. There you go. <laughs> party so, Artie, more hours. Woo, party Artie. <laughs> There you go. In any event, guys, thank you once again for joining us, and we will see you next time right here on the Signals from Mars live stream brought to you by the Mars Attacks podcast and VMRIT.com. There's no holding back. You just you just got to go. Anyway. I was holding front. There you go. <laughs> oh, boy. On that note, we will see you.